Okay, so this video is going to be a little bit of a precursor to another series I'm going to do on React specific testing. So if you're looking for React specific testing content, it is coming uh, after I get done with this uh, testing 101 mini series here. I'm going to be trying to do a little bit more of these mini series where they're not so super involved in a long project, but more uh, structured around just teaching you sort of basic foundational skills in different areas. So in this video and in this mini series, we're going to be doing some testing 101 for JavaScript using Jest. Now, it's a common misconception that Jest is only for testing React components. In fact, you can use Jest to test re anything JavaScript, and uh, I highly recommend it. So what we want to do is, well, you're going to want to get cloning of this project. This project GitHub will be in the description of this video. You're going to clone it. It's basically going to be a folder. You can see a source folder with an app.js, an app.test, an index.js, which is just importing app, and an index.html, which just says eh, testing 101 and loading up the script. Now, to make things easy, instead of having to deal with the whole Webpack thing, I am doing parcel.js to make this nice and effortless on our part here and there is essentially a build tool up and running in here so after you get this cloned npm install all your dependencies now i'm going to be using the terminal in vs code here so i don't have to tab back and forth you can hit that with control tilde to get your terminal over here i am using fish shell so if yours doesn't look like this with a nice theme that's why i'm using fish shell i'm not quite sure of what theme exactly uh but uh yeah it shouldn't much matter based on what we're doing now now, we have a couple of things in our package.json file, which allows us to get up and running here. You can see we have a, a start script. So if you're to do npm start, uh, what this is going to do is fire a parcel and get us up and running at a local host 1234. You can see we have this testing 101 here. Now, we're not going to be doing a whole lot of in-browser stuff, so you don't actually even need to have this up and running, but I figured I would include it just in case. Now, the next thing we are going to have in here is an npm test which is just going to simply run just watch all. Now, this series is going to be a little bit about testing itself and a little bit about Jest, but it's not going to be necessarily about configuring Jest. Basically, we installed Jest, which is going to look for all files that are .test, and using this watch all command, it's going to watch for changes and uh, output the results of all of our tests. Now, there's a lot more to configuring Jest in here, and maybe we can go over some of that stuff, but as you can see, my dev dependencies are pretty small. Uh, basically just parcel just Babel preset environment. I also have a Babel RC file which has preset ENV as well as ENV test presets ENV. This is so that Jest uh, is aware of the ENV Babel preset. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Uh, it allows us to use all of the nice new ES6 and, and onward good stuff, okay? So what I want to do is run npm test from this. And what you should see is, well, it says it runs app.test.js. Well, that's good. It's finding the test.js file, but it's going to say, hey, it failed. And why did it fail? Your test suite must contain at least one test. Okay, so since I've gone over all of the little setup sort of stuff here, let's actually get started writing our first JavaScript test and, and talk a little bit about what we're doing along the way. Now, we need something to test first. Um, and what this is going to be is a basic function. We're going to have a constant function, and it's just simply going to be named hello. Now, this constant function is going to be the simplest arrow function you've ever seen. It's going to be equal to parentheses arrow, and then it's just simply going to return hello, a string of hello. That's it. This is the function right here. Now, this this is fine. We're not running this function. We're not doing anything. The point here is that we want to test this function. We want to make sure that regardless of anything that happens or changes that we make to this, this is always going to be outputting hello. Now, this example is extremely trite and totally worthless because obviously a function that is always outputting a string of hello it doesn't necessarily need a test, right? But this is your first test. And we want to make this extra easy on you because testing is no fun uh, to get started when you are very confused about testing, okay? So we have app.js. We have a constant function, and it's named hello. Let's go ahead and export that function. The reason we want to export is that so we can import it directly into our test, which is an app.test.js. So we're exporting this. 
we can now come into app.test and we can import within brackets because it's not the default export. We can import hello from dot forward slash app, okay? So we're gonna be importing this function. Now at this point, we could actually just console log hello and believe it or not, our test runner should output hello. And you can see it's outputting it right here because the test runner is actually simply just running this file. It may seem like it's a little magic sometimes, but what's actually happening is just is simply just firing up this file. Okay, so that's nice to see that this is outputting our hello, test.js, super nice, okay? But we're still saying it fails because we do not have one test written. So let's write our first test. Now, the first thing we need to do when writing a test is to describe the test. So we're going to say describe, and then we're going to say hello. Okay, we're going to say we're testing hello. So this is just simply a string with a description so that when you look over here in your test that you know exactly what you are testing. Okay, next we're going to have a simple arrow function. And inside of this arrow function, we're going to have an it function. Now the it function is where you're essentially writing your test, so to say. The it is sort of describing what it should do. So you're gonna say it, and then again, the first parameter is a string describing your test. It should output hello. Because obviously this function that outputs hello, we want to make sure that it always does this. Again, this hello function isn't necessarily anything crazy that you'd expect to change, but uh, who knows, right? So next we're going to have a comma and then again an arrow function. Now inside of here is where we actually want to put our code that tests this function. And this code is essentially going to expect the results, right? It should output hello. So we want to make sure that this always outputs hello so we can use something called expect. Now expect is something you'll see in a lot of different testing languages uh, like Mocha or whatever, but just uses expect like this. It's a function that takes the thing you're testing, right? So we're going to expect the hello function, right? So we're actually going to call hello with parentheses and all, right? So we're going to expect hello, and then you end up using methods in this particular case to actually tell it what to expect. So we can say expect, and then to b, and then a string, which is hello. Now when I save this, you can see that Something is actually really hilarious happening, which sort of illustrates one, why Jest is so great, but illustrates two, uh, that our test failed. Um, so when I save this almost instantly, I mean, this is the fastest test runner on the planet, uh, you can see hello should output hello. So we now get this red arrow or this red alert that says, hey, our test failed, right? This test failed, hello should output hello. It's not outputting hello. So what we're saying is, hey, we expected this value to be hello with a capital H, but what we received was hello with a lowercase h, which means that our function is not working correctly, right? Because our test, uh, should always be outputting hello with a capital H. And you can see it's great because not only does it, it tells you what it should be, what it actually received, it tells you on the line that the test was called, it says that one test failed out of one total, and you can see pretty instantly why people like Jest as a platform, okay? So this is our very first test and it just failed. Now let's go ahead and adjust our actual code to make it work. So instead of outputting hello with a lowercase h, I'm gonna output hello with an uppercase h. The moment I save this, just refines the file, reruns the test, and we get a nice green check mark. Now, uh, one of the great things about testing is how much green you end up seeing once your test passed. It makes you feel really great about your code. But now we know we have the uh, peace of mind that if some other developer were to come in here and say, oh, let me just mess around here, or perhaps it's a typo or something like that and then you run your tests and you can instantly see now that this function is not doing what you expect it to do again the example of just outputting a string hello is super kind of trite but like but the most important part is is that we're instantly made aware of whether or not this code is doing what we asked it to do we ask it to output hello we modify this function and then all of a sudden we're made aware that it's not doing what we asked it to do
Okay, so this is example number one. This is your very first JavaScript test with Jest. Now, one of the things that I've never loved about testing is, well, our function is one line here, and our test is a few lines to simply just make sure this output hello. And this might not seem worth it to you. And I guarantee that as we go, it will seem more and more worth it as you understand how to more robustly test your code. Okay, because in this example, yeah, this might not be worth it. But as your application grows and it becomes more complex, the need for these kind of things become more and more important. So check it out. This is testing 101 with level up tutorials. We're going to be diving into some more testing concepts as we go. And I'm going to be doing this as a free series on this channel. So check back. Uh, there are going to be new videos for this every week. Um, and then we're going to dive into React testing in a separate mini series. I'm going to be doing a lot more of this type of content here where we, we have specific goals in mind, but not necessarily giant projects. Okay. So as always, this is Scott with level up tutorials. If you would like to help support this channel, uh, release this type of content, if you want to see more of this type of content, head on over to leveluptutorials.com and you can either head to leveluptutorials.com forward slash store and purchase any of the series or become a subscriber and get access to all of these premium series. Vue.js for Everyone is the latest series in March and the latest series for April I have not yet announced, but it is going to be really, really good. Uh, so we also have Pro Gatsby which is a awesome static site generator, modern CSS layouts for understanding CSS grid and flexbox, and all sorts of great content. There's 66 tutorial series available on this uh, website. So head on over to leveluptutorials.com forward slash pro and become a pro subscriber today to get access to all of it. So thank you so much for watching. And in the next video, we're going to actually uh, write a little bit more real world test where you can see some benefits and stuff like that. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.